welcome to the My RC Life YouTube channel, where we send RCs through the air and then back on the bench to repair. Let's go! What's going on, everybody? Travis Mike from My RC Life. Um, I got some parts in the mail today. So I can continue working on the Techno MT410. We got the proper spring purchase and the proper shock ends. So we're gonna put those on there. There's your part number if you need the part number. Locking shock rod end and spring perch set. TKR614OC. I've already opened up the new motor mount. I'm going to show you why my motor mount stripped out so quickly. Because this was a fairly uh, fresh build. It hadn't been ran that many times. And for that motor mount to strip out like that, I, I only uh, readjusted the mesh on the thing one time. Well, when I first got this truck, this is the motor I got. Well, these holes, they weren't on M3, they weren't an M4, they were nothing that we could find as far as what size bolt it was. So we ended up taking a 1020, I think this is a 1024, and uh, tapped them to that. That was the next the smallest size we could go. So that was fine, except now, we can't see this won't fit in there. So we had to counter bore this out, drill and counter bore this out. So it would take for that bigger 1024. Okay. And bam, that did work. But while doing that, See, this is a normal hole there, and this is your mesh hole. The bolt that screws in here so you can set your mesh. Well, we drilled this hole out so much bigger in the counter bore part. I don't know if you can see in there. It broke into the side of those threads. So I didn't have very many. I only had maybe like that many good solid threads and uh, instead of being able to you know have a good set of you know like this deep of threads yeah so anyways what I'm gonna do this time is I still have to use the 1024 bolt because we got a 1024 hole in this motor unless we used a different motor which we're not gonna use a different motor I really like this TP power lawn can it's uh, been a really good uh, option I like it a lot but what I am going to do is just modify the bolt itself and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that I'm gonna go ahead and measure this here all right, we got about 215, 215 thousandths. All right. We're going to trim this head down. All right, it's about 260, 62 thousandths. So we need to take about just under 50 thousandths off from this head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and lightly... Clamp it down in my drill chuck here. Just something like that. Run it, make sure it's spinning true. Looks pretty good to me. Then I'm going to come over here. Hold the trigger on the drill and spin this at the same time.
as you can see, it's definitely working. Okay, we got 225 now. It needs another 10 taken off in it at least. Okay. All right. Oh, it needs a little bit more than that. Come on now. There we go. Does it fit in there? Yes, it does. Look at that. Beautiful thing. Perfect. Okay, so this will fit through this way, but we do have to modify the motor mount just a little bit because we got to make enough clearance for these threads to go through. But that's okay because it ain't the thread hole that broke through our tap hole running this way. It's just that counterboard hole for clearance of the head of the Allen screw, that's all. So what I'm gonna do is just clamp this onto there, okay. I got a drill bit picked out um, that's uh, just over the diameter of that for clearance. Okay, we're gonna let this drill just find its own center there. Bam, we just need to take it out. Flip it over to the other side. Well, let's make sure that's gonna fit. Oh yeah. Let it find its center again. Bam. There. Now that is all done. See the difference in these motor mounts now? Now this hole isn't going to be being interfered and drilled into by a counter bore like this old motor mount was. So it's gonna be a lot better. Now the head of this Allen bolt is gonna stick out a little bit, but it don't matter. It, it can. Um, it's no it's no big deal. I could grind it off if I wanted to, but I don't really want to do that because <laughs> then my Allen wrench is only gonna go in so far. And uh, the Allen wrench is really thin. The Allen head is thin walled anyways because of all the material I had to take off. So I don't want to give it even more of a chance to like strip out. So I'm not going to worry about shaving that head down. I'm just going to let it stick out like that and not worry about it. And like every good machinist knows, never leave any burrs. Take your countersink. Get rid of that little burr on the back side. And it makes it so it looks a lot nicer too. Perfect. All right, we're gonna get our Loctite here. A little bit more Loctite on that one.
Okay, tighten that one down. Tighten that one down too. Okay. All right. I actually used the Techno Loctite on this, the blue, and it worked really good. So I'm going to use the Techno Blue Loctite back on this stuff again. There we go. Okay, start that down on there a bit. I don't know exactly where. Right around there is where I'll kind of snug it to a bit, I'm thinking. Let's see, is that going to be... Now the original screws were only so long, but I went and I found in my X-Max bolt kit, I found some that were quite a bit longer, a decent little bit long, longer, and uh, they fit on there without bottoming out in the hole really good. So I'm going to go ahead and use those. I'm going to use the Techno Blue Loctite on here too. This looks of quality. The regular blue Loctite by the Loctite brand, it's like milky, creamy blue. This is like nice blue, you know. Okay, I got the mesh pretty close. I only got one bolt in it. I'm going to go ahead and put the bottom bolt in here now. Get some Techno Blue Loctite on there. The bottom bolt, you got to go through here and at an angle. If you look right there, you see the screw coming through. Okay, now I'm going to check my mesh. I don't know if you guys can see. See that little bit of play there? That's perfect. Let's lock her down. Ugh. Same thing on the bottom. Check it one more time. Perfect. Now I'm thinking about putting a big pad of hot glue underneath here. So while that hot glue gun's warming up, I'm gonna go ahead and fix my shocks. I'm going to go ahead and put the locking shock and ends on there. There, man, the babies are in there. Okay. Pop these all apart. Undo these shock ends here. Ok, 
Okay. Get these pieces of heat shrink I put on there, pull those off. All right. Go ahead and open up our thing here. We just need two of those and two of the others. I'm gonna hang the rest on the wall. All right, we need to get our rotating ball thingy bobber out of there. Come on, it's almost out. One's out. Oh, there goes the other one, it went flying. Put these back in our shock parts. Get these off in there. Now these have to screw on to here. And that's gonna be the correct thread now. <laughs> Don't gotta have no stupid shrink wrap all put on there to make it so they don't fall off. Okay, it's on. Get this one on. Okay. Put that on. Then we put our springs on. Has it down a ways, line this up so it goes in line, that opening goes in line with the hole there. And push it up and it locks in there, perfect. Same thing with this other side. Perfect. Then I got these tiny little set screws. And they go all the way through. And hold them all together, lock them together. Just like that. Okay, now we just need to pop our balls back in here. Just like that. We gotta put our bolts back in down here. Okay, let's see here. Okay, I got that lined up. Right there. Perfect. Next one. Same spot. Okay, now the hot glue gun should be warmed up here. I'll hold this outside here so I don't get that servo wire in the hot glue path.
It's so long, I want it to have some support. Okay, let that tack up for a minute. It's almost touching the bottom of the motor all the way around. I know it looks kind of crappy, but it's going to help to maybe not bend that motor mountain crap. I'm hoping. Alright, now when I hit big jumps, I'm not so worried about this heavy motor flexing down like that because it's got a little squish pad underneath the back side of it. See, it's only being held in place by this, and it's so long, you know. I just worry about it bending stuff or ripping the threads out of the can itself. Got to do some good, you would think. Okay. Alright, so it probably don't look the best, but whatever. It's going to perform good. Now what we got to do is uh, wait for the hot glue to dry, give the Loctite uh, 24 hours to dry, and then maybe I can give it its first rip. I don't really feel that good right now anyways, so even if it could be driven, I wouldn't go drive it right now. I'm just trying to stay inside and get feeling better, so. But as soon as I get, as soon as I'm feeling better, I'll take this one out and give it a rip for you guys. And I'll get the 8S Savage out and give it a rip for you guys too. That's all for today. I'm Traxxas Mike from My RC Life, and I'll see you later. Bye guys. Thanks for watching another episode of My RC Life. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.